Good morning and indeed good afternoon to all of our attendees from around the world. And thanks for spending time with us. Today we're going to be talking about transforming your field service organization. Um, and it's my great pleasure to, to walk you through the content today. Just a quick um, touch point on the agenda. We're going to first address some common challenges that we're finding in the marketplace when we deal with our customers. We're then going to go towards steps that you can take that are practical about uh, transforming your field service organization in this digital era. And then we'll talk about some next steps that you can look to um, kick off as you go towards your journey. We will be taking questions throughout the session. Uh, we have a team on standby ready to answer anything. And so please post your questions through the Q&A section. Um, we will address if there are any particular questions we need to answer, we'll answer them right at the end. I also have a bunch of resources that, uh, that are at my disposal or at your disposal, and we'll make sure that we can get those to you. Without further ado, let's, let's jump in. So what I wanted to start off today with is, is what are we here to achieve? Well, the first thing is to say that this is the start of a journey. A field service transformation or any transformation, is needs, you need to look at it as a journey. It's not going to be an overnight or a switch uh, of a button. So this is the start, and hopefully it's a, it's a start of a, of a great journey, an exciting journey for your business. Uh, we're here to talk about challenges. We're here to talk about what other people are experiencing problems when we go and consult with customers um, in various industries. We're going to bring some of that um, those challenges to you and just really talk about it and get them out in the open so we can see how to solve those challenges. And thirdly, I'm hoping to give you something to think about. Um, this is not a sales pitch. We're not here to push product. We're not here to demo live software. What we're here to do is talk about field service transformation um, and we're and hoping to leave some good content behind. So to begin, here's a very interesting statistic that Forrester recently released. They said that 72% of businesses um, are, have improving the customer experience as their top priority. And that's, that's a great statistic um, and, it, and it seems to mean a lot. But my question really today is, if that's true, why are there so many bad customer experiences all over the world? Uh, if you think about things in your personal life, uh, you think about maybe your mobile operator, if you think about insurance, that's always a good one. These are not necessarily companies or organizations that we're associating with great customer experience. But we have to bet that those companies are investing heavily in customer experience. And so, you know, my question is, is why? And so let's look at some of the challenges that we see our customers facing. The first challenge is company silos. Now, I guess it's a, a result of um, what we've done in, in management structures over the past 50 years, how we've said we need to set up functional decomposition throughout the workplace, we need to get areas of specialty, and because of that we've created company silos and we've potentially even created bureaucracies where we've got people sitting on top of those silos forging ahead with their own strategy um, and what happens is that these people don't always come together to agree on what the central view of the world needs to look like. So as they mature and grow, they do so in a vacuum, they don't do so in a, in a combined effort and what happens is that as customers move between these silos, they experience a different piece of, of your organization in a different way, and that creates some key challenges. Notwithstanding, of course, um, how customers experience your technical organization versus, for instance, your sales organization. The second big one is, is cost pressure. Um, you know, we've been in a, in a sustained, tough economic climate for the last decade. Um, not everybody has been growing, not everybody has been doing so well, and so there's increasing and constant customer cost pressure. Customers want to sweat assets for longer periods of time, they want to maximize the return on investment of those, uh, of those assets, and some of them want to look for new ways to purchase. They're not necessarily wanting to buy expensive equipment through a capital expense, they might want to look at doing that through an OPEX model uh, on the income statements, and they want to procure things as a service rather than this capital intensive and cash intensive assets. But it's not just the internal, uh, the initial cost factor of course. Um, they want to consider the total cost of ownership and they want to make sure that the total cost of ownership is low and make sure that after sales service is cost effective and that the equipment is yielding the highest return possible. These are all significant challenges to the field service organization. 
The next thing we're noticing is that as equipment is becoming much more sophisticated, the customer wants the supplier to be more integral to their process. They want supplier so-called skin in the game. They want them to be involved. They want best practice. They don't want to learn and be guinea pigs. They want to understand how you as a supplier can bring value to their organization. And most importantly, they want some of that return on investment that was promised to them during the sales cycle. So they need the supplier to be more involved. It's not just a simple transaction anymore. The next point that we see is that there's growing service and maintenance demands. As suppliers around the world move towards this service-oriented model, there's a shift in service level agreements away from response time and towards resolution time. So it's not just good enough that you respond, now you need to resolve the query and resolve the issue as quickly as possible. Um, we don't want reactive support, we want proactive support. We want you to prevent issues from happening before they happen, so that I minimize downtime in my factory, minimize downtime in the field, on my mine, whatever the case may be. So these service demands um, really are, are growing. And as customers out there are looking for bundled service offerings, they want preventative maintenance, they want guaranteed uptime. And so field service organizations are, are, are faced with this challenge of how to recreate their businesses to meet these demands. The next point is, of course, education and training and capability within field staff, sales staff, and, and more. As customers want more, everybody in, in your organizations needs to be more educated, better trained, better able to turn around problems faster than ever and at a lower cost than ever before. And these are significant pressures. We're experiencing in, in South Africa a lot of uh, what we call brain drain, people leaving the country, going to seek new waters or new opportunities abroad. And so the skill level within South Africa uh, is, is becoming a, an increasing problem. And so you know, we know that this is a problem around the world. Education and, and, and is the education market flooding quality skill into the workforce? The answer we know is no. And so you know, we've got some key challenges around training and development. The last point that we find is a significant challenge is, of course, older, outdated technology or the absence of technology. And except for mobility, the average age that we're seeing of field service technology out there in the field is between 8 and 11 years old. Now, that's significant. If you just think about um, 11 years, we didn't have anything like an iPhone or an iPad 11 years ago. How much has technology changed in the last decade? And if so, why are you still using 10-year-old software to run your business in this modern era? So these are the old the challenges. And so what I wanted to present to you today were the building blocks, really, of how to go about solving some of these problems. Um, and what I would be very interested to hear is if, if you have more challenges that you're facing out there, please post those in the Q&A so that we can hear more from you and, and see how we can help solve some of these problems. When we look at these building blocks, there's really four key areas. The first is an orientation towards profit, um, and I'll be talking about each of these points as we go. The second point of focus is automation and systems. The third one is around people and talent and training and management of, of people and, and capability. And the last is about breaking down these organizational silos. So the first point is profit. Of course, we, the, the, the topic of the discussion today is about how to turn your field service organization into a profit center. And so the first part to, to look at is really a profitability mindset. And this is not such an easy thing. According to uh, a recent study last year by the TSIA, they found certain very interesting findings. 33% of businesses in their uh, survey viewed their field service organization as a cost center, pure cost cost center. 54%, the bulk of them, had started the transition to the profit center, but had challenges in adding capability and cost to meet the demand of what that meant to be a profit center. And getting paid, of course, um, a fair price for the value that you create is an ongoing struggle. You know, customers want that low cost. Remember we talked about that? So how do they reconcile with all of this additional cost now because you're trying to move away from a low margin game into a high margin service oriented game, um, you get some real challenges with how to talk about value. We are seeing 13 
percent of companies move towards that or embrace that as a service offering. And they're really leveraging their field engineer's status as that trusted advisor on the ground to make sure that they get improved customer outcomes. And really, when you move your business's orientation towards that service orientation, you start to open up new lines of revenue, new capabilities that you didn't have before. What I wanted to do at this point is really just post a question to the, the audience out there and say, where is your service organization at the moment? Do you view yourself as a cost center? Do you view your field organization as a profit center? Or do you see it as a, as an, as a service center? Uh, in your understanding of what I've briefly spoken about, I'm going to, in the next slide, talk about how to transition and what are some of the key things you, you look at, but I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. All right. So here's an interesting table, and again from the TSIA, and what we see here is a maturity spectrum. Now, just at this point in time, um, if you're taking down notes, please note that we will be sending out the slide deck, and if there's any particular things, if you want to see this TSIA um, white paper, please get hold of me. I'll provide my contact details at the end of this webinar, and you can please reach out, and I'll gladly send that to you. But as we see in this table, we've got some organizational considerations, and really what's what we need to think about is that it starts with an organizational alignment and there's definitely change that's involved. And there's a bunch of areas that we need to look at as we move from cost center towards as a service. I'm not going to go through the whole table, but let's pick on a few. Let's start with financial focus. When you're viewing your technical operation as a, as a cost center, it's all about cost control. It's all about reducing overheads. It's about reducing the, the amount of people, the amount of equipment that you use. Um, of course, you've got work in progress inventory sitting in, your, in, your, in the, the boot of your vehicles that are out servicing, and that's really tying up cash and capital that you could use for other things. And of course, the CFOs would be looking at that saying, guys, we've got to find ways to reduce inventory in the field and, and sort this out. But it's massive pressure around cost control and can be a very strangling kind of effect. When we move up to the other side of the spectrum and we look at an as a service model, we're really talking there about customer profitability. We're saying, how can we provide service and equipment, not just equipment, but service and equipment to make sure that our customers are more profitable? And if they are more profitable, we open up new opportunities for revenue. Remember I said customers want skin in the game. They want you to be involved in their business. And so they're willing to pay for that expertise, so presuming, of course, you have them. Um, and so that's, that's a key focus area. If we look as, as an example um, at, at pricing, you know, when, we, when we're talking about cost center, we're looking at cost plus, and we're talking really about very low margin game. There's low margin for error, um, and, and, it's, and it becomes a bit of a problem to start managing those costs. As we move towards an as-a-service model, we can look at opening up new pricing opportunities like outcomes-based pricing and consumption-based models. Uh, if we look at a, a really good case study of Rolls-Royce, they are starting to look at providing their uh, massive engines for airplanes as a service. So rather than going and spending millions of dollars on buying this expensive machinery, Rolls-Royce is offering that as a service and everything is involved, maintenance, warranty, service, the actual equipment, etc. And their objective was really to keep companies like Boeing in the air, keep the plane in the air with excellent operation of equipment and that is our service to you and because of that you will get um, you'll, you'll be prepared to pay more for that service so that's just an example I have got in our in my resources uh, section I've got a very nice case study around Rolls-Royce and how they're using technology to, to provide this as a service model the last points I really want to point out here in this in the section is around governance when I'm sitting in the cost center model the all of the attention lies in the sales representative or the sales executive and the pressure really sits on them to say sell the right deal sell the right expectation of the customer and it all sits there when you look at it as a service model this really this responsibility moves away from the sales representative into the c-suite it is your it is your objective it is your board's objective to make sure that you can provide new lines of service new capabilities to customers and so it's moving beyond just the equipment that you produce towards the service oriented model and as i said before it's a combination of these products and services that that really create this as a service model 
The next piece is automation. And this really is the role of technology and the role that, that Microsoft and, and other players want to help you with. Um, but let's have a look at this. First of all, the bulk of your cost comes in on-site service. And, and this is really, again, from the TSI and the study of, of field service organizations, and that's considerable. You know, what they mean by that is that people in the field uh, putting equipment out there, that is where all of the expense is coming from. So let's look at ways at how automation is going to help out. Well, first of all, Internet of Things, IoT. It's a very interesting uh, field at the moment, and there's lots happening around there. But let's look at some of the practical use cases. First of all, how many of you are tracking data related to your machines and equipment at the customer location? Are you monitoring how your customers are consuming your products every day? I'll give you a simple example. We have a, a customer that, that uh, sells and services a, um, forklifts, and those forklifts are sitting in warehouses lifting up equipment onto high shelves. And if you didn't know much about forklifts, they have weight and height thresholds. So a particular forklift could potentially pick up 30 tons. Another one might pick up only five tons. And so what, we're, what they're finding when they started applying IoT into the environment is they started finding that customers are using equipment that is not built to handle heavy workloads. Uh, they're using the wrong equipment. So they're using a 20 ton forklift to pick up 25 tons of payload. And really, maybe 25 tons is an exaggeration. Um, but you get the point, right? So you, you don't want to extend uh, that piece of equipment beyond its, its threshold. And that's where some problems happen. And that's where you get parts breakdown. That's where a lot of cost happens. You get downtime, etc. So IoT can play a role in gathering data about those machines and letting you know in a central way what's going on. Uh, they can help you do remote monitoring and diagnosis. They can help prevent on-site dispatch. If you can fix a problem, a small problem, just by saying to the customer, Mr. Customer, you really shouldn't be using that machine in that application, and that's causing stress, uh, you know, rather use something else, you could actually prevent the, the field worker going out and consuming lots of cost. They can also avoid unnecessary boot stock. So if you can do remote diagnosis and monitoring, you can also to see potentially what the problem is and get the customer involved in diagnosis and say, okay, now we need these particular pieces of equipment. We need to put that in the in the boot of the of the what we call a bucky here in South Africa or a, a van, and off you go to site to go and fix the problem with the right with the right tool set and equipment. The last thing that tech also does in this sense is is remove the paperwork and speed up the service to cash process through a proof of delivery. And so those are all things that. IoT and tech can play a role in. In the sales side, how can you know technology and automation help your sales endeavors? Well, the simple point is cross-selling and upselling opportunities. I'll go back to our customer in the forklift business. If they can see that their customers are exceeding thresholds, then that's a great conversation to go back there and say, look, I think that you should be looking at, uh, at equipment that can lift things higher or lift more weight, whatever the case may be. And you can drive a much more collaborative, much more challenging and pointed conversation with your customer, rather than being very reactive and uh, being squeezed at the customer at every turn. The other thing about the sales organization is that field workers can become part of your sales, your, your larger sales audience, and, and an extended sales force. And they can drive the right conversation with the customer at the right time. Remember what I said, customers are looking for uh, people who are involved, people who are knowledgeable people who understand how to get this done. The last piece is on the marketing side. And the important thing here is it's not just about golf days. It's not just about newsletters. It's not just about product announcements. But how are you leveraging data collected in the field to drive education in your customers, to do surveys, to gather feedback from those customers about how you're performing, how your equipment is performing in the field. And so there's a bunch of, of things that marketing can add to the process to speed up automation and service delivery to customers. So I've got another poll question for you all. And my question is, are you considering a spend in Internet of Things or field service technology in the next 12 months? And there's some answers there. Yes, I'm considering Internet of Things. Yes, I'm considering field service. Yes, I'm looking at both of those things. Or no, I'm not. We'd appreciate your answer there. So the next point is training. 
And I've got a, a, an old adage here that the CFO and the CEO are talking to each other, and the CFO says to the CEO, what if we train our people and they leave? The CEO responds, well, what if we don't and they stay? And this really just speaks to a reliance um, that we have on our people and their ability to execute in the field and their ability to do their jobs to the best of their ability. And the couple of challenges that we're seeing out there is an aging demographic and a lack of available skill. And of course, the cost of training and recruiting and retaining staff higher than ever. In South Africa, we have the added problem of strikes and labor unrest and things like that. And these are all parts of how you as a, as a service organization balance your workforce and deliver on these, um, deliver on these challenges. One of our customers in the banking sector has a great saying. They say, you need to be digital on the inside before you can be digital on the outside. And really what they're talking to here is creating and leveraging technology to solve some simple problems. In their case, they, rather than having distributed people around the, the country as credit officers servicing local demand, centralized those credit officers to provide a better quality of service through a ser uh, credit ser center of excellence. And the customer just needed to use different mechanisms to get hold of that credit. In fact, it was an internal customer because, of course, you know, you're not actually, as a the consumer have access to those customers. And so making it relevant inside of a field service environment, I think that there's a case study around ThyssenKrupp, uh, the elevator guys, and they really are embracing technology like Microsoft HoloLens to drive great capability through the six center of excellence idea. And their, their idea is that they have very highly skilled workers that are in a central location, and those workers make sure that they're connected up to the guys that are in the field. The guys that are in the field use HoloLens technology to do some diagnosis, to have a look at what's wrong with the machine, ask some questions, um, and bring in the center of excellence as they are on the, in the field and getting those problems turned around as quickly as possible. Well, we've got a great video case study that shows how Thyssen Group are using this technology, and I encourage you to have a look at it. My last point about how how you should help and transform is really on silos. Service and custom experience, as I said before, is not just the job of the pink fluffies in marketing, the, the, the CX guys. It's really the job of everybody in the organization. How do your customers experience you when they phone? When they phone the, the contact center to get help, when they phone the receptionist, when they speak to your sales staff, when they speak to your, your service dispatcher, are they getting consistent delivery across each of these areas? It is the job of the whole organization to come together and have a mandate towards customer centricity. If you put yourself in your customer's shoes, think about how you can help them. Think about how you can maximize their experience. Think about how you can turn every experience into value so that they're happy to part with money in exchange for the service that they get. And of course, how do you empower your people to get the work done? Now, Microsoft have been investing heavily in this field service area and in technology that it handles across the board from the initial customer request through how we engage with technicians and how we do advanced scheduling and how we dispatch, how we even connect to devices through IoT and how we use mobile technology to empower people in the field to not only sort issues out but do it as quickly as possible. And so I encourage you to have a look at the field service uh, capability that Dynamics 365 has got. We're very happy to help walk you through that capability. We really see the implementation of field service as the starting point. It at least provides you with the foundation, the right kind of technology to start, the right kind of conversation to start, the right integration across departments. You really need technology at the heart of that to control the flow from the, the minute that request comes from the customer all the way through to the problem being solved on the ground. And so. The first place to start with all of this is really in the technology and making sure that you're on the page. Well, after, of course, you have agreed that customer centricity is your mandate. So in terms of where to from here, uh, I've concluded the, the, the main content area, but what I encourage you is to access the available resources. I'm going to show a slide shortly that has got all the resources, uh, but I'm happy to send all those to you. We've got great white papers. We've got great video case studies. So there's a wealth of resources available online that you can go and have a look at how other people are embracing technology, how they're implementing thing, these things in their business.
practice and, and spark ideas and spark conversation, as we said before. This is the start of a journey. We would like to help you and Microsoft would like to help you through this journey to say, how do we, how do we help? What are the kind of things? How do we bring in best practice? What are we doing with customers out in the field? Let's go and have that conversation. We're, of course, absolutely happy to set up a demo of Dynamics and the field service capability. Any of you who are interested, please just pop me an email. There's my email, sean at ec.co.za. Happy to facilitate a demo. I'm happy also if you're if you're in a different time zone or if you if you want local support i'm happy to reach out with microsoft to get someone in your boardroom and have a conversation the last thing is we're welcoming it. as a partner we've gone and experienced on the ground what these technologies can do and we're, we're helping a bunch of customers in in different industries and those industries because we have a multi-industry focus we can bring technology that's happening and making an impact in in let's say banking or finance or professional services and really bring those ideas through into the field service operation and show you how simple things can really make a massive impact. And so we're very happy if you want to reach out to us for a consultation. Uh, there's, no, um, there's no ties to this. There's no cost associated. We're very happy to have a, start the conversation with you and say, where are you in your maturity spectrum and how do we take the first step? So you can either leave your details in the Q&A or, of course, reach out to me um, we encourage that. I spoke before about some of the resources. Here they are. There's a bunch of web links, some, some great Dynamics resources for you. There's, there's a bunch of things on YouTube that you can have a look. Um, but we've got some great video case studies. And I'll send this to you if, you if you need it. Please just let me know. That comes to the end of our presentation. We have a few minutes left. So I'm just going to have a look and see if there's any questions. No, it looks like we have everything answered. If there's anyone that's got some new questions, please pose them now. Otherwise, thank you everyone for your time today. We really appreciate that. Um, and we hope that you have a great journey forward. Just thought I'd share for those that are still on the call. There's some poll results, um, and that's quite interesting that uh, the bulk of the attendees looked at, the, uh, at their business as a cost center. Uh, we've got a quite a few here as a service, so that's, that's excellent, and some great feedback. Bring technology in, in the next 12 months, well, that's great. I think there's a lot of people here at the role of technology and, and what it can, how it can help impact, and, and we're very happy to have that conversation with all of you, so please reach out. Thank you, everyone. Um, really appreciate your time. There don't appear to be any new questions. I see someone has asked for the resources. We will be sending uh, this a copy of the deck. It will be made available online if you want to go and have a look at the, the full webinar later on with your team or with your board. Um, it will be all available to you, but also just reach out to me if in particular. Thank you, everyone.